Good morning, students. Today we are discussing about the minorities and marginalization. What is a minority? Less number of people. In your group, thirty students are there. Out of thirty students, if five are different group, they will be called minorities. If they want one student is smaller in the size in the class. He will be every day time ridiculed and made fun of it. Or somebody who is having a different color. If colored people are more, then that your equal strength is there. It will not be affected. When number is less, it will be affected. So that is the situation. Here we are going to see the minorities. The term minority is most commonly used to refer to communities that are numerically small in relation to the Rest of the population. So, if in the class majority are small students and one is uh, size is bigger, one or two size, those two groups who are size bigger will be the minority. He will be affected by the dealings of others. So, that is situation. So, minority means less number when compared to other people. In one place they may be minority, in some other place they may be majority also. This is not compulsory everywhere they should be in minority. So that section of the people that you must understand. Okay. It encompasses issues of power, access to resources. The persons are near to the power. How you are? Then resources you are available. That means whether you are rich or poor. The size of the person or the ability of the person is little less, but he is financially well off. He may not be so much ill-treated, humiliated, and so he is so so much rich. He is able to do the throw away money and purchase others. Then he will not be felt or made to feel that he is different from others. So that's the difference, and it has social and cultural dimensions. Social also, if he is a minority, means less number of people in that. It can be religious minority, it can be linguistic minority, it can be racial minority. Anything it can be. Linguistic means language minority. So if you go a Karnataka, Karnataka member go to Delhi. When he goes to Delhi, he there he will be minority. A North Indian comes to the Karnataka, he will be minority. So that's the difference. Size size can be a disadvantage and lead to the marginalisation of the relatively smaller communities. Size of the person. When you compare with others, if your size is smaller, this will affect. So many things are there in the reasons for marginalization. It is not the one reason; many varieties. You might have seen your friends how you they are ridiculed, made fun of. The persons who are weak in the group. That is the marginalization. Somebody may be financially weak. Somebody may be physically weak. Somebody may not be so much uh, handsome or beautiful to look at. Any of these things can cause marginalization. So that is all. Safeguards are needed to protect minority communities against the possibility of being culturally dominated by majority. Otherwise, everything will be confirmed by minority. Majority. So it is necessary. So there should be some special privileges, rights. If you belong to this group, you will be getting this. Otherwise, everything goes according to majority. The rules and regulation tells that everywhere everything will go as per the majority rule. Then minority cannot survive. Majority will will every time push the minority out. So that should not happen. Minority also should have. The privileges and rights to exist and 
compete with others and survive. Otherwise, it is injustice. So all sections of the society, whether you are a belong to my economic minority, that is why entrance examinations are held all over India in all the examinations. Same question paper is applied to everybody and but still there is a difference. The persons who are well off will have more facilities to study. They may score more. No percentage even when we are having online classes. Many children may not be able to have a mobile. At the same time, many will be able to have internet, very high speed internet, mobile or laptop or a desktop, all with all facilities. Even home theatres will be available for them to listen to the classes. So, everything depends on them. So, if majority is given everything, majority everything, majority decision is taken, minorities may be affected heavily. That is why the constitutions, the rules and regulations are made to protect minorities. In some place we may be in majority, in other place we may be in minority. Now if we take the Hindus, Hindus in India are in majority, but if we go out to Europe, become minority. So those things, and if Christians, they are in majority in Europe, they come to India, they are in minority. So all those things are issues. So we will be in different places, different. so we must be able to adjust with the situations and live. And naturally, the minority should have some protection by the law. That is the reason. Sense of insecurity may get actual, accentuated. It's improved, progressed. If the relationship between the minority and majority communities are fraught, means if fighting is there, not correct, there can have a friction. These safeguards are committed to protect India's cultural diversity and promoting equality and social justice. So that the yeah, ordinary people, even if he is poor, he is given the right to survive. He has to have the right to survive. Everybody should eat. No, this minority should not survive. That should not happen. That is why these safeguards are made in our constitution. Muslims and marginalization. According to the 2011 census, Muslims are 14 percent, 14.2 percent of the total population of India. Okay, of total population, only 14.2 percent are the Muslims in India. 80 percent they are Hindus. Balance the count. Jains are there, Sikhs are there, Christians are there, all others come that are 20, that 20% 20 or 14% are Muslims, 80% Hindus are there then. Okay? India's population are, are considered to be marginalized commodity in India today. They say, as per the studies, it is proved that the Muslims are marginalized. It means they have not come up to the level of the population. When we will say a group is not marginalized, that group is able to compete with the others, or when it comes to majority with standing, they are able to stand equal with them in the percentage of at least percentage of the population. If 84% of the population and in the higher sector of the society, means in the officials, in the government sector, everything that 80% should be Hindus, then that is the acceptable. But only 100% Hindus are there, then the minorities are not considered. They are not given their positions. They are not given their chances. So all sections of society, according to the population, they must get the chances. That is what the constitution says. So that is why even reservation, even the uh, Hindu society, even reservation is made because of that. Because those lower caste people in the Hindu society should be brought up. They must be given their positions according to their population. Because they may not be able to compete with others. Their education standard is not so much high. 
Most of them are first generation learners. First generation learners may not be able to compete with the uh, gener uh, gener uh, learners who are traditionally or in many generations they are learning. So that problem is there. Because the com uh, comparison to other communities, they have over the years been deprived of the benefits of the socio economic development. So the Muslim society, according to the studies of 2011 census, they were deprived of uh, economic and social security. That is what. Let's see the data. So this is data. Religious community, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, and Sikhs. Okay. Pakka houses. Forty-three percent of the Hindu community is having pakka houses. Okay. Muslims, thirty-five percent. Christians, forty-eight percent of them are having good houses. Sikhs, forty-nine percent are having good houses. When it comes to the electricity. Okay, this word, this word should have been there. When it comes to electricity, 65% of the population are able to have electricity among the Hindu community. Muslim community is 63, Christian community is 69, and Sikh community 91 of them are having electricity problem. When it comes to the tap water, availability of water in their homes, from the governmental sources or any other public skilled sources. As a tap water, 75% of the total Hindu community is able to have water. When it comes to the Muslim community, 67. Christians, 86. And 6, 96. See, in all these things we can see, this Muslim community is less in everything. And Christians and the six, their population is for uh, Christians come around 3% uh, of the total population of India and uh, six come around 1 to something only. So they are well settled comparing with the, even with the Hindus of You know, the Hindu society where there are lower caste people and all those. So that is the reason. So this is the situation. This is a one kind of thing. See, here also you can see the Muslims are at the lower edge. Their population is uh, only 14 percent in that. In that 14 percent, this is situation. Okay. So now let's see another. One. This is about the literacy rate. Literacy rate. All. All India literacy rate. It is uh, the all people all over India as of the 2074. Yeah, maybe something has happened to the system that is just coming. Up. Okay, 74. Hindus all over 63 percent of Hindus are educated. When it comes to the Muslims, it is 57. Okay. Christians, it is 74. Sikhs, it is uh, 67. Buddhist, 71. And Jains, 86. So, highest literacy rate, we say, is Jains are the highest literacy rate people in India. Second in answer, we can say Christians are second in number. Third, it is a uh, Buddhist. Then comes the six. Six are there. Below that it comes the Hindu. After below Hindu only the representative of the Muslims. Forty percent of the population they are still in that also they are very less. Comparing with the other sections of the society of the people in India. And when we come to the public employment of Muslims, public employment, how many percentage of the Muslims are there in different sectors of the Indian government? Okay. They are the population is only 13 percent. IAS, only 3 percent they are. IPS, only 4 percent. IFS, only 1.8. Central, central government, central sector, public sector units, 3.3 percent they do. State public government, 10 percent each. State ESU, central means public sector units, means public sector units, I hope you understand. You don't know this, or KSRTC, 
like their government different departments are there or different uh, companies are run by the government those companies msi and like that so they are eight percent so their population of our india is uh, 13 but you know where they come near to the population around in the state you know, they come near to 10 percent and in the bank and the rba the muslim population is only 2.2 percent so this is about the about the Muslim society, society the minority. So they are marginalized. They are not uh, given equal facilities, or if they are not able to compete with others. So this is a situation that is there in our textbook. It is a population. All those things is there in our text. This is what they say is given. So 13 percent, 13 and a half percent. They are told about it. So really, for total population is uh, 14 percent. Still, they have not. 3, 4, 3 percent APS offices out of 100. 4 AP, uh, uh, 3 AS offices, 4 IPS offices, here 1.8, not even 2. Here, not even 4. State, state government. Here it is, uh, uh, if you say 3.7, about 8 percent, you can say. But here, state government 10. Public sector is 8, here is only 3. Indian Oil Corporation, like that, so many central government companies are there, all of these things. That is the discussion here. People, BSNL, like that, companies. So, 8 and 2 points in banks and so many banks are controlled by the government. Sir Bank of India, State Bank of India, Canara Bank, Allahabad Bank, Syndicate Bank, like that, so many banks are controlled by government. In those, all those banks calculated only 2 percentage, 2.2 percentage of the population are Muslims. So this is what is the, the real situation. Reality is different, it is, we should know it. Okay, so this is the first So we must think about how the marginalization should be changed. Whether people should improve their situations, how it should be, how the facility should be provided to then only there will be equality. If a child comes and pinches me also, I will have pain. So I should see that the child is not giving a chance to pinch. Then there will be happy and peaceful. Otherwise, there will be disagreement and friction and problems in the society. We should make us make the world happy as much as possible. Then we will have a happy life.